Hey, today we're going to begin our series on judgment. It's going to be a three-week series, and uh, we are excited to get started. So let's go. Okay, so we're starting our series, In My Opinion. Opinions are something that are flying around uh, our society right now um, at a rapid pace. Whether it's your opinion on things that are going on in our world or the political scene or something else, uh, opinions seem to be just flying around all over. Now, it's not bad to have an opinion but I might just make the argument that what we call an opinion is actually a judgment. You see, we don't just take our opinions because opinions in themselves aren't bad. You can have what you believe. It's when we take that and make that a judgment on somebody else and take that and say, like, because you don't have the same opinion or because you don't have the same judgment as me, you are wrong. Now, why do we have this? What drives us to make our opinions, our judgments on other people? And I think for one of those, it's insecurities. I think we have insecurities about ourselves. We have insecurities about what we know. And so we try to project that on somebody else. And when we do that, it becomes more like a judgment. Sometimes we do it to bond with our friends because our friends are doing it. Our friends are judging somebody else. So we jump in and we judge that person as well. And then we call it our opinion. And if we're honest, sometimes it's just because it's fun. It's fun to make fun of people. It's fun to make judgments about people. And uh, it's not right, but it's it can have a fun aspect to it. And so that's one reason why we make these judgments instead of just opinions. Sometimes it's a competition. Sometimes it's to see who can make the bigger judgment about somebody else. In fact, if you're on TikTok at all, you maybe have heard of a thing uh, called It's For Me. Well, that's literally making a judgment about somebody and saying it's for me first. Now, it's used as a joke on TikTok, but it's all about the competition of who can come up with the best one. Sometimes it's true. Sometimes our judgments about people are true. And what we're saying is actually the truth, but we say it with such a negative light that it hurts the other person. And sometimes we just don't mean harm by it. We just want to say it and we want to tell the person, but the way that we say it, the way that we say, in my opinion, comes across as a judgment of the other person. And therefore, we don't say it in a loving manner. We say it in a harsh manner. So I think the big question is now, how are we supposed to keep from doing it? How are we supposed to keep our, op our opinions, our opinions, and our judgments, our judgments? Well, we look to Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians 4, Paul write, writes to the church of Ephesus about Christian living. And in that, in the beginning of verse 29, he says, don't use foul or abusive language. He comes right out and says, our mouth should not use that type of language. So if your opinion has anything to do with foul or abusive language, it's not an opinion, it's a judgment, and we need to be very careful about that. You see, because if it hurts, breaks down, or damages friendships, relationships, and influences, it's most likely a judgment. It's not an opinion anymore. And in Mark 7, it says, it's not what goes into your body that defiles you. You are defiled by what comes from your heart. You see, it's not about what we take in. It's about what comes out. 
And what comes out from our heart depends on how we're doing. It depends on how much we're in the word. It depends on what we're taking in. So yes, it's not the taking in that defiles us. It's if we take in too much, then it starts coming out of our heart. And then we start talking bad about people. And our opinion becomes a judgment. So where do we go from here? What can we do? Well, I think the first thing we can do is we can check our hearts. How's your heart doing? What's your heart saying? Do you have a natural tendency to just be negative? Do you have a natural tendency to just talk bad? Do you, do you have a natural tendency to try to be sarcastic? Then you need to check your heart. How's it doing? Are you in the word? Are you reading the Bible? Are you filling it with the good things so that that's what flows out of your heart? I think the second thing we can do is we can change our language. We can stop using the foul language and the abusive language. And we can think about what we're saying before we say it. We want to make sure that, you know, what we say is what we mean. And we don't want to hurt anybody in the process. I think another thing we can do is just choose not to participate. If our friends are making fun of somebody, we can choose not to do that. We can say, you know what, I'm not going to make fun of this person. I'm just going to be here. And we can choose not to dive in and have the fun or the competition that can sometimes come with judgment. You know, Paul went on uh, into the church of Ephesus in Ephesians 4, and he said some other things about what the church should do. And he started by saying, let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement for those who hear them. You see, Paul says, it's, don't use this language, but make sure that everything we say encourages people, lifts them up, brings them to a better place. And who doesn't love that? Nobody likes to be picked on. Nobody likes to have negative things said about them, but we all love to be encouraged. And in fact, Paul goes on. So I just want you to listen to this. Uh, Paul goes on and he says, get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ forgave you. You see, we're supposed to get rid of all the negative. Paul says, push that out. And love one another and lift each other up. What's going to help that other person? So I think we need to choose words that help others, not words that hurt others. And I think that's important. And I think we can get lost in that quite a bit. So you have the power to build up instead of tear down. But now the question is, how do we do that? When I'm in the moment, when I'm with my friends, what can we do to make sure that what we're saying builds the person up instead of tears them down? Well, there's two questions I think we can ask. And the first one is, why do I want to say this? You see, everything we say, everything we communicate has a reason. And that reason is what is behind what we're saying. So why do I want to say this? Why do I want to say whatever I need to say to my friend? Is it to help build them up or is it really to tear them down? And it's a tricky question because you might think, right, that it's, it's there to build up, but you might not say it in the right way. But we got to ask the question, why, what's my purpose in saying this? Why do I want to say this? And I think the second question we can ask is, is it helpful? Will it be helpful to the other person if I say this? I know for me, there's times when I'm talking with my friends or uh, I'm talking here at work and there's times when I just, I, I have to ask these questions. Is what I'm about to say going to be helpful in this situation? And there are times when I have to uh, bite my tongue and not say what I'm going to say or what I want to say because it's not helpful. And my motive is probably not right. And so then I just 
be silent? And so students, I think those are the two questions we've got to ask. Why do I want to say it? And is it helpful for the other person? When we choose words to help others and to build them up, then it becomes Christ-like. And we keep our judgments away from our opinions. And so the question I leave with you right now is, what's one reason I tend to want to gossip? What's one reason you tend to want to say something harmful about somebody else? And in just a moment, you're going to go into discussion groups and you're going to be able to answer that question. What's one reason why you fall in to a judgment instead of opinion? Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this time. Lord, thank you for your word that fills us up. And Father, I just pray for these students. I pray for these leaders that what comes out of our mouths will be helpful and will be uplifting to other people. But Lord, that we will keep the foul language and the angry talk away. Father, help us to be people of you. Help us to be people that project the love that you want to project to others. Lord, help us to keep our judgments separate from our opinions. Father, we give this time to you as we go into small groups. In Jesus' name, amen.